The following presentation was recorded at the 2011 Southeast Linux Fest in Spartanburg, South Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following Diamond and Platinum sponsors in 2011 for helping make these videos possible. Test, one, two, one. Sound good? Right. Wanna run that for me? Should I introduce you to my lovely assistant? <laughs> Whichever you'd like. All right, let me know whenever you're ready. Okay, great. Um, my name is Roger Sober. I'm here to talk about leveraging Drupal contrib modules to make the admin process a little easier. Um, I'm going to start off real quick. Uh, go to the next slide for me. Just a little bit about me. I've been doing this, you know, development kind of stuff for about 10 years. Been doing Drupal for four or four or more years now, all the way from four six up to the current. Um, had a lot of job titles in that 10 years. Um, web developer, systems architect. I'm actually currently a a partner at OS Solutions, um, part owner. Um, during this, a lot of this stuff that makes this a little bit quicker for us, we use Bluehost, um, which is a real cheap hosting environment. If you ever want to kick around Drupal, kind of want to learn a little bit of this stuff without having to pay a whole lot, you can get hosting for like four bucks a month. They have simple scripts, which gives you kind of like a one-click install of Drupal, which will help you get, get off, the, uh, off the ground here. Uh, Drush is great. We actually give talks about Drush itself. Um, a lot of times, I actually presented Drush here last year. Um, Devel, which is another good one, help you generate some test content in a hurry. Um, before I go to the next slide, I'm going to get kind of a gauge for the room. How many people here are relatively familiar with Drupal? Okay, it looks like just about everybody. Um, out of that portion of people here, how many of you guys are developers? Any, <laughs> that's fine. Um, any of you guys admin sites, kind of do content management for them or those kind of things? This talk's gonna be mostly for you guys. Um, there's a few of these modules that we're gonna talk about that are actually gonna be helpful for people like me that actually build the sites or spend time actually developing the back ends um, just to kind of make things look a little bit nicer, um, not overwhelm you as a user trying to go in and try to admin some content or just try to add some different things. Um, instead of using the Drupal default stuff, we're going to go ahead and use some of these contrib stuff uh, that's out there to kind of make that a little bit easier process. Most of this is going to be geared toward Drupal 6 because I've actually been using these modules for Drupal 6 for quite some time. A few of them are available in 7. Um, some of these things are kind of no longer useful in 7 because Drupal 7 takes care of a lot of it for you. Um, we can talk about that a little bit at the end or if you have specific questions, let me know. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about you can go ahead, is administration themes. Um, a lot of people go ahead and just use the default Garland. Um, that will drive you nuts eventually. Um, the first thing I got to say about that kind of stuff is make sure that you always, always, always use an administration theme because otherwise you start making CC or CSS changes and template changes on the front end that are meant to be for users to see. You're actually changing your same theme that you're using for all your admin. That's going to drive you insane down the road. Um, there's a lot of these kind of admin themes out there that are actually designed just to be an administration theme. They're not meant to be a front end, they're not meant to be seen by the, the general public, those kind of things. Um, Root Candy 7, uh, oddly enough, is the admin uh, theme for 7. They've got a back port to 6. Um, you'll see that in the modal pop-ups in 7 now. Um, you know, there's, there's a long list of them. We're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about Rubik's. Which is the next slide. Rubik's, uh, you'll see that on all these slides, I'm basically going to give you the project page, and I'm going to give you, a, you know, the little synapses that they have on the page right from the developer. Some of these will make sense, some of these won't, but we'll talk about them. So if you can go ahead and pull up the, the, uh, the demo site that we rolled just for today, this is kind of default Drupal. It's using the Garland theme in the front and the Garland theme on the admin end right now. Um, I just used Devel to generate a bunch of content so you can actually see some of this stuff in use. Um, you want to go slash admin for me? Yep. So here, here's your admin section using Garland. 
It's a bit crowded. Um, it's, it's not designed to be an administrative theme. It gets to the point where you get a little confused, you get a loss, and obviously, like I said, if you start adjusting templates and things like that for your front-end display, you're going to be changing these same templates over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to enable Rubik's, which is just an admin theme. Open Publish uses it, which is a, a relatively large Drupal install profile. Um, they're used, Open Publish is mainly used for sites that do publication. Um, we've actually, myself and uh, Stephen here, who's my assistant, is, uh, well, assistant here, <laughs> business partner. <laughs> Let me clear that out real quick. Um, we actually got our start kind of in the publish, publishing business and working for some newspapers and things like that. So we came across Open Publish and took a liking to it. So just kind of like the theme for it. Um, you'll go ahead and go to the admin theme. In, in Drupal 6, by default, you got a little part down here that says administration theme. That didn't used to be there, but that's, that's kind of a newer thing in 6. And we're going to go ahead and instead of using system default, which is a no-no, we're going to pick Rubik's here. And we're also going to click the use admin for content editing. Because once again, CSS adjustments, template adjustments that were meant to display are not necessarily the best things for when you're going to the edit pages on, on different nodes. It'll drive you nuts. You don't want to have to start putting in conditional CSS for different things. So now you'll see we got a much cleaner looking little, uh, little interface. Everything's kind of rode out a little bit. You gotta, if you scroll back up a little bit, you've got all these nice little icons that the, uh, the theme developer brought in for you. So it kind of gives you a, a, a visual cue as to what you're actually doing. Um, this will make things a lot easier. This is designed to be an admin theme. So all these kind of things are taken care of for you. And if you do need to make some changes, you do need to make template changes, you need to make CSS changes, you can make them here. And that'll only affect this section when you're an admin only as, as a you know, privileged user. Um, go ahead back to the slides there for a second. The next thing we're going to talk about is a kind of, kind of a module that we use in conjunction with this. It's called the admin module. Um, this gives you a list of, you know, gives you a menu that basically let you go through a lot of the, the uh, admin section without having to go to that slash admin page every time that loads all that stuff for you. Um, go back over and enable that for me if you wouldn't mind. So there's a, there's a few of these kind of modules out there. There's one that's called admin menu. A lot of people like that. It gives you a nice little, little black bar at the top that gives you all the drop down menus and all that. The problem that we come across because we work on a lot of larger sites that have you know, banner images, have all these kind of things that are high, you know, high scalability stuff, high, high pub publicity kind of stuff, you end up having to do a lot of templating, a lot of CSS adjustments and theming on the front end, and that kind of gets in the way for you. So you don't want to you know, be trying to get to different, different aspects of the page and have this admin menu sitting in the way. So we use this admin module here. This just gives you a nice little wrench in the corner kind of lets it hide away when you don't want to use it. And it, it kind of takes all that uh, interference with your theme out of the way for you. Just gives you a nice little, little menu that just gets you to all the different places on the site, all the stuff on the back end. You don't have to go to, you know, go to the slash admin and then go to blocks and all that. You can actually just go there directly from here. Um, this will make, make users' lives a lot easier because obviously Drupal as a, as a whole is all permission-based and role-based. If your role doesn't have, have access to a particular link and you're logged in, even though you have the admin module, it just won't render that link for you because it's not something that you have access to. So that'll stay a lot cleaner. The, the, ad, like the super user admin, sometimes it'll get a little crowded over here because you have a lot of different modules enabled. You have a lot of different permissions as a, as a uh, privileged user. But like I said, as, if you're going into a publishing company like we've come from, and you have you know, content editors, you have you know, actual uh, site editors, those kind of things, where you may have different privileges for different roles. Um, this is real nice because if you don't have privileges to any of these things, you're just going to go away. So you have a real nice, clean little interface that just gives you just the links that you can use. And like I said, once you close that, it'll just take it right out of the way for you. It puts it up in the upper corner. Can you hit that close that for just a second? that will just pull that away. And that doesn't interfere with your theme. It makes it a little bit nicer. You can actually browse the site. Uh, you want to go back to the home page for just a second? Now you'll notice we didn't change the front end. It's still ugly garland. And, uh, but you still have your little wrench in the corner. So that means you can browse through the site. You're still going to have quick access to all your admin tools, all the little things that you might be able to do. 
and uh, it won't kind of get in the way for you. No, they don't. Basically what happens, well, let me take, the, the question actually was, will anonymous users see this, this wrench? That's actually um, controlled in the permissions. You can actually say if you can, who can see the admin, the admin module. Um, obviously, if they see the admin module but they have no permissions or anything else, they're not going to get anything. Um, you can turn this on for just certain roles. You, know, you may have people that are just uh, you know, fact checkers or those kind of things. So they don't actually need any of this. They're just going to read through, so you can take that away. Um, go ahead and go back to the slides for me. Block edit, this is another one that's real nice. Um, instead of having to go through, go to your admin area and go to admin build and go to your blocks page and they have to go to the, find the block that you're looking for, which if you're on a large site and you have, you know, let's say dozens or hundreds of blocks, which actually happens quite, a, quite often, instead of having to search through all those and try to figure out, you know, what was that block named, um, because not everybody uses real good naming conventions. What, what it says on the top of the block isn't always what the block's actual title is or what it's con the configuration end is. This will actually give you a nice little visual cue, once again, handled by permissions, that once enabled, you can go to a block, any block on your, on your site, and as you hover over it, if you have the correct permission, it'll give you a, a direct link to the configure for that particular block. If you use that, you get to skip all those intermediate pages. It's a real time saver. Um, obviously, like I said, because it's permission-based, you're not going to have problems with other people getting into it that aren't supposed to. Um, but it also gives you a real direct route of people that may not actually be developers of the site, but they may need to change some of the content in the block. Maybe it's just some wording or something like that, and they don't want to, say, you know, put in a ticket to go, okay, well, how do I get to this to, to find out how to do it? And you don't want to give them all the, uh, you don't want to train them on how to navigate the back-end side of it. You just want to let them have a configuration link. Um, you want to go ahead over to the site, and I think we have to enable it. Yep, block edit links is on. Okay. So you can go back to the front page there. And go ahead and close your, yep. And if you go ahead and mouse over that, you'll see you got a nice little configure link there now. So instead of navigating on the back end to find that, basically click right there on that link. You're gonna go ahead and you wanna just change the body, say, hello world, bang, I don't know. Um, and go ahead and hit save. And because Drupal does save your destination, where you're originally from, take you right back to where it was and see if we've made that change in literally seconds instead of having to go back through the admin, instead of having to have somebody put a ticket in to go ahead and make this change. Um, okay, let's go back to the slides. Context. Um, now, context is um, a much cleaner way, a much more controllable way of, of adminning blocks. The old way of doing blocks um, was that you went to your admin, your admin build block page and you just started assigning blocks to regions. And then within that, you start going and, uh, you wanna go back and click on one of those blocks for me for just a second. You might wanna set visibility. You know, this block only shows up on, I don't know, article pages or on you know, blog posts or those kind of things. So instead of putting page specific, saying, okay, well, everything's gotta be slash blog or whatever, you may not have that naming convention. Your pathing may be different, those kind of things. You wanna have some kind of, some kind of logic in place to say, okay, well, if it's this content type or I want a site-wide context, those kind of things, you can do that using the context module, which will allow you to, to go into a specific context that you set up. Say you set a, a site-wide context. If you go in to edit that particular context, you know that that is for all the, all the pages on the site because it's a site-wide context. If you make a context for, that is only applicable on the page content type, you can go in there and change the blocks that are just on the page content type. You can use different PHP conditions, those kind of things that'll say, you know, if a user is of this role, if they are from this city, you know, in their profile, those kind of things, then show these kind of blocks. You can have, um, oh, I need a C tool, sorry. You can have all sorts of, you know, conditions and context. That'll, that'll save you a whole lot of time instead of going to your admin build block page because once again, if you start getting to a large scale site where you have dozens or hundreds of blocks, 
you may have 30 blocks that are in the right rail, but they only show on different sets of pages and those kind of things. This makes it a much cleaner interface for it. Let me go ahead and see if we can get that enabled for you now. And like I said, also gives you a lot more control over to where these things show up. Instead of just giving you what pages it shows up on or what pages it doesn't show up on, it gives you, you know, gives your, you some PHP access to do those kind of things. We're gonna go ahead and enable this. And I'm, right now, I've, I'm currently using the admin build block page to put, that, um, to put that block that was on the front page in the right rail. We'll go ahead and, and now that we have, yeah, you'll see, we've got my block on the right sidebar. So now if we go, now that context is enabled, you can go ahead and set that to none right now because we, we can actually go away from using this, this interface completely. We don't have to use this at all. Now that'll be gone. And <coughs> that little technical difficulty there. It looks like it didn't quite enable or something. Something along those lines. cash or something. What you see him doing here is just some drush commands, really useful for developers especially. Um, you can run, you know, you can clear caches, you can get into your SQL uh, command line, you can do a lot of kind of, kind of neat stuff from there, um, generate content, those kind of things without ever having to come to the, the interface. Um, download or enable modules instead of actually going to going to drupal.org, going finding a module, downloading it, FTPing it up, going in, um, extracting it there, going ahead and going to the modules page and enabling it. You can literally type drush, download, name of the module, and then drush, enable, name of the module, and it's taken care of for you. You don't have to go into this at all. So we're gonna go ahead and add a context real quick, see if we can't add one just for the front page. So what we're doing now is we're actually making a context for the front where we're gonna say these are the blocks that show up on the front page and that's it. That way when we go ahead and place this block, we'll have this block show up in the right rail on just the front page. You may have this for a number of reasons. Um, you may have ads that show up on specific pages. You may have you know, blocks, of, uh, blocks of content like a weather block or you know, social media links, those kind of things. Um, this gives you that kind of access. And this way once we do this and we add this to the front page context, We'll go ahead and we'll show it to you on the front page. And then we'll go to an interior page and you'll see that that, that block's gone. The other nice part about this is that if you have, if you're using the admin build blocks and you have, let's say the same thing, you have a social networking block that you wanna show, but you wanna show it in the left rail in certain times or the right rail in others, that's very difficult to do, use an admin build block because you're basically telling it, I'm, you're either a right rail block or you're a left rail block or your content block or whatever. By doing this with context, for each one of these contexts that happens, you get to reset that. You get to start all over again. You get to say, okay, well, I want, you know, on article pages, I want the social networking thing to be on the right rail. On the front page, I want it to be on the left. And you can do that this way. So you'll see that we got it on the front page again, it's still there, yay. You wanna just click on any one of these little generated pieces of content. Hey, Ron, yes. I wanted to mention another great benefit. If anybody's used that block uh, page, you mm -hmm. know, I don't know if there's a sort order to those blocks. It seems very random to me. Mm -hmm. But if you have like, you know, 20 or more blocks, just finding the block mm -hmm. that you're trying, you know, and so that interface on context, I've, I've gotten where I don't post the blocks page. Yep. So yeah, gentleman makes a real good point. Um, the sorting order that's on a on the admin build blocks page is actually determined by the uh, by the weight, but it's not displayed. <laughs> so you can drag those things up and down using the little UI. It gets really confusing when you start having a number of blocks. 
I've worked on sites like um, Jacksonville.com, which is the Florida Times Union site. They literally probably have 400 different blocks. And at the time that I was working there, they didn't use context. They used the actual blocks. Uh, they used the, the admin build block page and they used panels to control those kind of things. That was their workaround, which is really inefficient as far as large scale kind of sites. Um, you're talking places like Jacksonville.com, uh, uh, Miami Dolphins, the uh, NCA.com, like large sites like this that we've worked on. Um, scalability is really a big problem. Um, you want to make sure that you keep as little overhead as possible. So you use these kind of things, use features, some other kind of things to make these. These blocks only have to be rendered on certain context. It really helps with scalability and it really helps sanity levels of, um, of the everyday you know, content entry person that's just trying to get their job done instead of them having to sort through things or worse yet, put in a, a help ticket um, and kind of spend your time, spend you know, the sports time to kind of you know, move that and map that over to you. This allows them to get to this a whole lot easier and a whole lot less confusing for, uh, for the user and for the developer. Because on some sites, you may not be the original developer. You may be somebody coming in and you don't know what their naming convention was. You don't know what modules they have in place. You know, we don't, you don't know how they're making this thing, these things happen. If you use context, it's a little bit more of a standard. It's, it's nice, easy interface to look at. Um, really helps kind of streamline that process. I'll go ahead and go back to the, yep. All right, the next one we're gonna talk about is Taxonomy Manager. This is one of my favorite ones. How many people here are familiar with Taxonomy? Okay. For those of you who aren't, taxonomy is basically a, uh, an interesting way of saying tagging. Uh, you've seen tag clouds online. Um, it's basically you tagging some content. Um, taxonomy is a little bit more in depth there. You can set different content types, you know, different things here and there. The problem with taxonomy, the built-in taxonomy that's built into Drupal 6, is that you want to go ahead and go to the admin just taxonomy uh, page, is that when you want to go ahead and enter a taxonomy term, you literally go, I've added one, go ahead and do add term. We're gonna add a term to this vocabulary. Literally for us to do this, we have to do this page for every single term. And that's fine, unless you have 500 terms. And if you don't wanna go through this, this set of three pages 500 times, you might wanna look into, look into something else here. So we're gonna go ahead and he's gonna save this. He added this term. We're gonna go, now we're gonna go up to uh, taxonomy manager instead. Here's all of our vocabularies, we're gonna pick one. And we're gonna say, okay, we want to go add. Now I can put a whole bunch. Or if I really have a lot of them, say I have two or 300. There is also a, text, a mass term import with a text area under there where you can literally just open it up and slap in 100 terms, 200 terms, whatever. <laughs> I'm not sure if we can do both at the same time. We'll give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Yep, there they are. That quick, just done. The other nice part about this is you have, you can do exports, you can do merges. The double tree is really nice. You wanna go ahead and click on double tree for me? What double tree, <laughs> yep, just enable double tree is lets you kind of have, you may want to move a taxonomy term from one vocabulary to another, or you may say, okay, I actually want these, say I want manager to be under my term. You can actually click manager and click my term and drag it underneath it, make it a subterm just that quick. Um, really useful if you have a bunch of these, you want, you know, you have somebody, your client gave you, you know, or your boss gave you 500 terms, and he just gave them to you in a text document and says, here you go. And then a week later, they say, well, you know, these terms are childs of these terms. I need you to go back and change all that. If you use the built-in taxonomy, that's real, real complicated. With this, you can just start, you know, selecting them and dragging them underneath, move them all around, make a whole bunch of changes at one time, and it really, really cut down the amount of time it takes you to kind of add these tags. Really, really big favorite of mine, because almost every, Every large-scale site is going to use taxonomy in some form. Yes? Is this also a way to manage um, taxonomy? So, for example, if you have an existing tag set and you have words that have plural in the, in the regular case, so you've got snakes and snake, and you want to make, you want, because you have different users entering the mm -hmm. tag, even though they have the pre-population thing suggesting what they should use, 
Mm. Um, and you want to go in and clean that up. Mm -hmm. the, the question was, is, can taxonomy manager also be used to kind of manage the terms themselves? Um, he brought up the specific case of, you know, people wanting to put in free tags where they say maybe snake or snakes or South Carolina or SC. By the way, that is the, that's the devil. Don't ever let them have free tags. Give them choices. Don't let, anybody will, they'll, people put stuff in a camel case. People will put stuff in misspelled. Um, it'll, it'll really be a nightmare for you. Oh, I'm sure you do. <laughs> we worked for the newspaper and a lot, for a, a portion of time, they were letting people free tag stories. And well, one, that kind of gives them the ability to put in some not very nice terms. Uh, which are not nice either, because that all of a sudden gets indexed by Google, and uh, yay, you're jacksonville.com on top of Google for some arbitrary set of words that you don't want to be associated with. But yeah, you can use them here, you can delete different things here. If you actually click on the term, that'll take you to the term page, the, go ahead, click on that, where you can set, right here, you can set synonyms, relations, parents, all those kind of things, all that functionality is here. Um, it's almost insanity to not use Taxonomy Manager, especially if you're on a site that has any size. Any kind of, any kind of user base, it's gonna, be, it's gonna drive you nuts to use anything but this. So go ahead and we'll go on to the next one. Vertical tabs, yay. So you wanna go into edit a node for me? Um, basically when you go to a, a node edit, and these ones won't be quite as crazy, but you'll notice at the bottom here, I've already got it enabled. See how you have all these things kind of set in these vertical tabs for you? Um, you wanna go ahead and disable vertical tabs for me while I'm talking. Um, what that does is that gives you that interface like that and it'll stack all that stuff for you. Instead of this, having this really long page, um, your ad, edit page that just goes on forever, um, this kind of puts that stuff and combines it into those little vertical tabs on the side, which allows you to kind of interact with it right there. Um, it doesn't look so bad in a default Drupal install like this, but once you start adding some other modules like Content Profile and you start using um, node relations and all these other kind of things, they keep adding little things at the bottom here. See how we have authoring information now and we have revision information. And this would actually look much worse had we not used an admin theme because Rubik's is smart enough to collapse these things by default for you so it doesn't give you this overwhelming page to look at to just edit a note. Um, when we turn that, that vertical tabs back on, you'll see that stuff kind of all collapses for you. It gives you a much nicer, cleaner interface. It kind of hides all that stuff for you if you're not really looking for it. Um, it's still there. It just makes the, uh, makes the person that's working on the site that's not a developer, that's not a, a manager there that just needs to go in and says, say, I need to look at the revision information. You literally got it right there. and does a nice little load over there on the side for you. Once again, another thing just to streamline the look, streamline the feel, streamline the amount of time you spend on the site. Um, you know, time is money, and we all, all don't want to, you know, have all of our, either our coworkers or our employees, or for that matter, we don't want to have our clients getting overwhelmed by the system. We want them to enjoy Drupal as a whole, and these kind of things make this a little bit nicer for them, makes the user experience a little bit nicer, and makes the chances of you getting another, you know, either another contract with them or keeping your job there using Drupal a little bit more likely. Filter perms. Um, okay, so has anybody here, uh, other than myself, worked on any larger scale kind of Drupal implementations? Great. Um, you'll, if you've worked on larger ones, you'll notice, especially if you use contact construction kit and you turn on the content permissions where each field has its own set of permissions and you may have, I don't know, maybe you have three or four or five or 10 different, different roles on the site and you have 25 different content types and they all have their own fields and maybe your developer didn't think far enough ahead to reuse the same fields on a lot of these different ones so every content type has its own image field. Um, you'll start seeing in the permissions a really, really long set of permissions. Um, you wanna to go to the admin permissions for me? This module will let you kind of um, consolidate a lot of that stuff. Uh, we're actually gonna use this. It gives you this here, permission filters. It'll let you permission or filter by just the role that you're looking at, because as you start to get really, really large and you have a lot of roles, 
you kind of get cross-eyed looking at it, um, going, okay, I need to follow across where this one is for this particular role. This lets you only show the stuff you want. Say we only want to show stuff for anonymous, or we only want to say, I only want to look at the block permissions, and I want to look at them for all the roles, or I want to look at it for a particular role. Those kind of things, we're going to go ahead and see a much smaller list. Now that's a whole lot less overwhelming than that really, really large list of stuff that was there. Um, once again, just going to make your life a lot easier as an admin. You're not going to have to filter through 3,000 permission sets in order to say, okay, I just wanted to update, you know, I wanted to update the content manager's ability to see this one particular field. Instead of loading that entire thing and trying to look through it, you know, doing a, doing a search for a, uh, a term that may not be what it's called because modules are contributed by third parties. They're, they're by the community. We contribute modules. Anybody in this room can contribute a module. Your naming convention may not be a sane naming convention. You may have a module called um, block admin, but you're actually calling it administration block in here. So what you're looking for and what it's actually called may not be the same thing. This lets you say, okay, I know what module it was. Bam, only show the permissions for that particular module. Check heavy UI. This goes, uh, goes with, that needs to be enabled for me as well. Um, this goes along with that permissions. So say you have 10 roles again and you have 3,000 permissions and you need to make, you need to give a role of, I don't know, developer every single permission except three of them. So instead of checking 1,000 permissions uh, minus three, so 997 permissions, you can use check heavy UI, go back to that same, to that same permissions page, and there'll be a nice little, little checkbox at the top that'll basically check all that in that column for you. So you'll have all 1,000 of them enabled to begin with. Now I can go ahead and disable the three things I didn't want them to have. Um, it gets to be really crazy. You can see already how many permissions we have, and this is a very default site. I rolled this site this morning. So you can see how this gets to be overwhelming. Um, I don't know if that didn't seem to take. Sometimes we have to clear cache and some other things to get these things to kind of show up. Um, if it doesn't show up, once again, it's just a little checkbox at the top of each one of those. Um, there's actually an admin area for this particular module that lets you have some other places, like you may have content types that have a lot of check fields and those kind of things too. This will enable you to put that on there as well. Um, let's see if that shows up. Yeah, no good. All right. Trust me, it works. I just have a little, uh, little problem with this one, so I'm gonna keep moving. Views bulk operations. Um, this one we're not actually gonna demo for you. I'm just gonna talk about it a little bit because this site doesn't have nearly enough content to really show you how, uh, how powerful it is. Um, you need to have views installed in order to use it. But say you go to your admin content node, which is where you're gonna, you know, uh, you're gonna go to admin and just click on content. That's where all your content's shown. If you want to you know, use all these nice little filters and stuff that we have in here now where we, we pick out a group of, of nodes or something like that, well, you're only actually, when you go ahead and select the, the title here, you're, uh, you're only selecting the ones that are being shown. Drupal paginates. There may be 100,000 more of these that match these same criteria that you just, you just talked about. Um, but they're not going to be selected because you're literally just selecting what's on the page. Views bulk operations allows you to check this. It'll give you a nice little pop-up right here that says check, you know, select the 3,000 other nodes that also meet this criteria. And if you do that, then you can actually pick any of these update options at that point and select that for all, all the matching nodes as opposed to just the ones you're seeing on the page instead of having to go through page by page by page. Um, very useful, like I said, this site doesn't have nearly enough content to, sh to really show you how well it works. Um, but trust me, you get into large publication sites, you get into large news sites, um, large scale sites, um, you're gonna really, really wanna use, bulk, use bulk, bulk operations, even if you have your own site and you're just using this for a blog or something like that. You know, a year from now, you may have 300 blog posts. Well, you don't wanna, you know, you don't wanna go through 60 pages of that at 20, 20 nodes per page. Views bulk operations is gonna allow you to select all those things at once. Admin role. Now this gets back to what we were just talking about where, okay, there's 3,000 uh, 3, permissions on this site. I need to have 
a role that is basically a developer or an admin, a super user. Um, by default, Drupal has one of those. It's the user one account, it's usually called admin. Um, you may have a team of two, or you may have a team of 20 or 200, and they need to have all the access to everything to be a developer. Um, instead of making your own role in every single time you enable something, going back to this permissions page and making sure they have all those permissions, um, you can use admin role, which will basically, when it's enabled, which it already is, um, it'll go, you can go to admin from that, under users, um, it'll automatically make a role for it called administrator, and it'll set all your, all your privileges to it. So every time you go back to that permissions page, or I think if you go to the blocks page as well, it automatically rebuilds those permissions. So if you've enabled something new, you've you know, upgraded a module, um, and it's changed its permission set, instead of having to go through there and manually update those permissions for, for the users, it'll basically do that for you every single time. So you'll have a super user role as opposed to a super user account. This, this helps immensely when you have a number of people working on your site and you're using watchdog logs or any of these other things to find out you know, who went and made this change on this page. Um, well, if you're giving everybody the admin account, you have no idea. Um, there are some very large companies that you'd be surprised to hear their names that still do it that way. Everybody has the user one account. They have admin and they have a universal password that all the developers share. Um, that takes away all accountability. You don't know what user, you take away all the, all the built-in tracking that Drupal has, you take that all away by doing that. Don't ever share passwords. Make sure that you use, use administrative roles. Make sure everybody has their own account. Um, this is gonna make, not necessarily pointing the finger at somebody easier. This is gonna be make going to somebody to find out how we fix what just got broke a little bit easier. You know, I see you turned off this module and it broke all this functionality. Well, instead of me just saying, oh, well, user one did it, I better re-enable it. And then, you know, my coworker may not be in the same building. He may not be in the same state, time zone, country as me. Uh, maybe working in, you know, India, and he's up at midnight my time. He goes back in and sees, oh, this module, I thought I had disabled this module. It's back on. I better go turn it back off. Next day, you've got the same problem all over again. This way, you can go, oh, you know, Joe turned off this module, let me find out why Joe turned off this module, find out what was causing him issues, and find out how we can rectify that so that way we're not just disabling something or enabling something that everybody else doesn't need. And it, it'll help you, uh, help you get past that a lot quicker and track down those issues. Go ahead. So, Next one, content type overview. Um, this is nice for if you have multiple content types on a site. By default, Drupal 6 gives you page and gives you story. Um, you can enable blog, a few other things. If you wanna go to content types, there's gonna be a new little tab there. This will give you one place, instead of having to actually click into each content type to look at all the settings for each content type, this basically give you a little overview in the upper right hand corner. This will basically give you a nice little overview of everything. You know, what default option, workflow options you have. Like you'll notice right here, page is not promoted by default, but story is. Um, you may have different settings for comments, those kind of things. You might say, well, I need to do an audit on the site to find out, you know, I need to know what content types have, you know, have the comments turned on, how many comments are showing per page. You can make all these changes at one time instead of having to go piece by piece by piece and walk through each content type you know, keep yourself a little spreadsheet and start ticking things off as you went through them. You can literally just, as a line item, know each one right here. Go ahead. The, the question on this one was, how does this paginate? In the, the honest to goodness answers, I don't know. I've never had enough content. I've never used this on a site large enough to have enough, um, enough content types that that doesn't show. I've gotten to the point where it starts to scroll to the right quite a ways. I'm assuming that that's the way it's gonna to continue to work, but that's obviously just an assumption by me. I haven't actually looked at the code for this particular module. Um, most modules that I use, I'll, I'll try to take a look at the code first, just to get an idea of what's going on. And also for um, another module we're gonna talk about in a minute, uh, module info, a lot of times you'll download or enable a module, um, but the documentation is what we would say is, uh, is lacking from the developer. So you're not actually sure what 
URLs to go to to configure this module that you just installed. Um, module info will actually give you a lot of that as well. Um, tell you where those kind of things are, where the configuration is. You don't need to hunt so much, but we'll get to that in a moment. Menu editor. Um, once again, another thing to allow you to edit a number of things at one time. Um, the default way that Drupal works, uh, Drupal 6 especially, is that if you have a menu, you go into the menu, you'll go in, you'll see the, the items, you can either add an item or you can edit an item one at a time, same, same kind of way the taxonomy work. One at a time, you can piecemeal go through all your stuff. Well, on a larger scale site, or if you just want to save time on your small site, you may have a menu with 10 items. Instead of having to go through each one of these, there we're going to go edit menu, I believe. Oh, no, it's power edit. I'm sorry. Now you're going to get this new tab called power edit, which now everything in this hierarchy is shown right here, the title, the path, if it's expanded by default, all these things. You can make changes to 30 of these at one time if you wanted to. Or, um, you know, theoretically, it's unlimited how many you could, but you can make these kind of changes, wholesale changes. Um, like I said, this whole talk is about how to make, how to save yourself time, how to make this a, a lot easier experience, a lot less time consuming experience. Drupal's a content management system. You want it to manage your content. Well, in order to manage, manage the content yourself, you need to be able to use it and use it as quickly as possible. Um, these are all shortcuts of ways that, ways that you can make changes that you couldn't necessarily make by default. All these kind of things, you can make these changes individually, but these are all, all things that are going to automate this process, make this a much faster, cleaner process, save you time, save you money, save you a headache. Um, once again, you can see that all these different things are here. You can delete a, a number of these at one time. Um, if you have a large menu like this, it could take you 10, 15 minutes, an hour um, to make these kind of changes opposed to a minute here. Yes, question? So I noticed there's three modules contained within menu editor. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's great. The and okay. The, the question was, um, this menu, this, uh, this module, this menu editor module comes with sub modules. A lot of modules in Drupal do that. Views comes with a number of them. Um, a lot of them bundle this kind of stuff where they depended on, or on their parent or they may not be dependent at all. Um, menu editor node creation is um, what, like it just says here, it, it allows you to make a placeholder like you may be going ahead and adding a piece of content. Say you're, you know, you're writing a new article or something like that, but you're not ready to sign a path yet. You're not ready to let it be seen to the world. You just want it to be node slash 586,230. Instead of having that, um, this will let you say, okay, well, when it's ready, this is where this is going to go in the menu. It's just a placeholder for it. Um, the path, path autocomplete, is really nice on a large site where you may have menus that are just kind of pointing to, uh, to arbitrary nodes or things like that. You want to say, okay, instead of going to, um, going to the menu and adding a new item um, individually and then going, okay, well, where's that page? Let me make sure I get the right path for it, those kind of things, and copy it over. This will actually give you a nice little autocomplete. You can start typing the title or start typing the path to it. It will autocomplete for you. You'll say, okay, well, you know, I know the first word of that, that thing was, you know, Montana. You start typing Montana and it'll give you all the different matching results for Montana. And then you go, oh, okay, it's this one. Boom, there. You don't have to go back and search the admin, uh, admin content node. You don't need to use uh, views to write your own stuff to kind of, you know, find all these things. This will just give you a nice little autocomplete. Um, go ahead. Module info. I, I talked about this shortly ago. Um, You'll notice that if you go to the admin build modules page, yep, you're already here. You'll notice that each one of these now has a little, little link for module info. You want to click on, yeah, add context, I guess. When you click this link, it'll give you a little bit of info about them. Let's try a different one. Oh, context UI, sorry, because that's the, that's the default here. See, you'll notice that, like I said before, sometimes people that, that uh, contribute some Drupal modules may not actually have the time or um, may not have the knowledge to, to sit down and take, um, take good documentation, put it on the, the project page, those kind of things. Say so you found a module that does exactly what you want to do, um, but instead of having to look through the code 
and try to find out where all the, the uh, hook menus are and all those kind of things to find out where, where do I go to configure this module. You know, I just downloaded this thing. I just want to kick it around. It's in a sandbox. I don't want to spend time looking at the code right now. How do I find out where to go to look for, for the functionality of this? Well, if you install module info, you get, now have this, you'll see there's a settings. To go to the settings page, you, it'll actually give you a link to it, and it'll tell you it's under, it's under sites, or administer site building context settings. So I can actually do that right in the path if I wanted to, or I can just click on this. There's a context inspector. There's a, there's a number of these kind of links here. And there, you want to click back on that? Takes you directly to the settings for this. It gives you a nice little shortcut instead of starting to, you know, trying to dig through and guess where things might be. Instead of going to the straight admin page and just looking for the, the name of the module, you'll have this little, this little settings here that'll tell you where to go directly. Right. Tab Tamer is an, another nice little utility module here. You'll notice that on a lot of themes, when you start, you start logging in as a privileged user, they'll give you little tabs at the top for edit, for view, for delete, those kind of things. Well, you may not want to necessarily take those permissions away from somebody, but you may want to hide the tab if you go to just slash admin. Um, there'll be tab tamer on the bottom right, I believe. Um, you may just want to go ahead and you may want to reorder it. You may have 10 different tabs depending on what uh, contributed modules you've used, you may have node queues installed, you may have all these kind of things. You, wanna, you might want to rename that instead of saying node queue, you might want to call it um, front page slider because that's what, what's driving the front page slider so that your, your end user doesn't have to know that, oh, that front page thing, in order for me to change that, I go to the node queue, I think it is, and change this around. You can actually name these. You'll see you got view, edit, revisions, deval right now. Like I said, as other modules are enabled, you'll have these. The night, it gives this nice little way of changing the, what it's actually called. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Um, you can actually hide them. You can completely disable them. You can move them up and down using the, the little weighting system that Drupal has. Um, we'll go ahead and do that and just save it and we'll go ahead and take a look at one now. You know, this list can actually get really long, by the way. So let's just go to the, there you go. So you'll see right now you've got view, edit, deval. Now that he's changed that edit link, when he, he changes it, now it says change the content. It's a lot nicer for, for the people that aren't developers, people that aren't Drupal experts, people that don't do this for a living to just be able to go, okay, well, I know what that means. I don't necessarily know what edit means or, you know, edit is a little different. Devel, I don't know what devel is. I don't know what node queue is. But if I give it a nice little title that makes sense, now I can, I can point people there and point them in a hurry, so. Um, I think we've got a few more I'm just gonna kind of gloss over real quick because we're starting to get a little closer on time and I wanna, wanna open up the discussions at the end. Um, better formats. Um, so basically, you can give different users and different roles different, uh, different I'm trying to think the, the way to say that, input formats basically. You can let people say, okay, um, my content editors, they don't know HTML. They, they can't have, um, they only get filtered HTML to begin with. But my web development team has PHP and has you know, full HTML and has filtered HTML. Well, by default, you know, they're always gonna use full HTML. So better formats lets you go ahead and by role, select which particular filter that they're gonna use. So that way you say, okay, well, if they're, this, if they're a developer, make them default to full HTML because what you'll end up having a lot of times is some, you'll have a developer that's in a hurry. He wants to go ahead and put a little widget on your site or something like that. It's just before lunch. He's getting ready to run out the door. You say, hey, I need you to do this. He goes, okay, all I have to do is add this content type. Let me slap in this little code, hit save, and I'm going to get out of here. Well, when he does that because you know, it's not defaulted to full HTML, all of a sudden now on where that pretty little widget is, you see script equals blah, 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 blah. And that's no good. One, because you're just showing everybody your code at that point. Um, especially if it's PHP code, that's real bad. But uh, you, may want to, you may want to save that bit of hassle. This may only happen to you once. It may happen to you a hundred times. But this gives you a nice little way of saying, okay, 
Well, if they're a developer, always make them do this. If they're a content entry person and they have multiple ways they can put something in, default it to the most sane one for them. Instead of having a site-wide default, let's do it for individual roles. That way we don't get you know, script tags put on our front page of you know, the New York Times, which has happened because they're a nice little Drupal shop too up there now. Uh, go ahead. Easy launch. Easy launch is a nice little block it gives you. Basically lets you kind of start typing in um, different menus, menu items and lets you launch directly from there. We're not gonna go ahead and show this one because we're just gonna kind of talk about it real quick. It's got some neat little JavaScript-y kind of stuff. Um, you can use it and it's, it's really nice. Um, because it puts in that block, it gives you complete control over to where you put this on the site instead of like the admin, admin module that puts in the upper left-hand corner. This thing's just a block. It lets you put it anywhere and you can just start typing uh, different, different pieces of functionality and it'll actually give you little suggestions of where to go. Um, the problem with it is if you start doing some crazy jQuery stuff and, and things like that on your site, you may actually break this. So um, nice for, you know, if you have a small site and you just want to give people a quick way to get stuff, you're just running your own blog site, something like that, and you don't want to have all these other modules that are, are cluttering up your, your site, make it run a little bit slower. Because for every module you enable, um, that's a little bit more code that the, the platform has to, has to digest every time the page is loaded. Um, it's an app, Drupal's an application, it reads all those files all the time. So the more stuff you have, the slower your site's going to be. Um, go ahead. Checkbox filter, That's, that goes back with what we were talking about before. Um, once again, I'm really useful on permissions pages. Um, some of these things are different ways of doing the same thing. We had the, the filter permissions earlier. Um, this is another way to kind of use that where you can start just starting to type in the name of the module or start typing in the name of the, the different permission or typing in the name of whatever checkbox might be on the page. And it'll give you a little place to jump right to that. Um, like I said, I don't use it very often because I use, the, uh, I use filter permissions, um, which gives me most of the functionality I want. I don't usually give people checkboxes on sites. I like to do select lists, I like to do those kind of things instead. But it's a nice one that's out there that you, know, you may find useful. Content lock. Um, really, really useful on, once again, multi-user site. Um, if you have a content editor you know, that may not be in the same room or even may be in the same room as another content editor and you're both making changes to the same node at the same time, well, you got race conditions. Whoever, but whoever gets there last is the one that's gonna win because that's the one that's gonna be overwritten. Um, this allows you to say, okay, it lets you say by content type. Okay, well for articles, I don't want people doing that. So for articles, I'm gonna put a content lock on. What that means is that when somebody is in that, that particular article or that content type or that node and somebody else tries to load the, the edit page for it, it'll give you a nice little red warning or whatever colors you have on your site. A nice little warning at the top saying, you can't edit this. You know, such and such user is already editing it, it's locked for now. And that means, okay, well, I know that I don't wanna make changes while they're making changes. Let them go through, once they make their save, then you can go back in and you can adjust whatever you wanna adjust at that point. There's also a, a lock timeout that comes in this module, it's another sub-module. Um, this gets into what we are talking about before with the sub-modules, but this gives you a nice little thing of, oh well, you know, Mary decided she's gonna edit the the news story about the, the church down the street um, on the front page of our site. Well, she started to edit it, decided, oh, well, I'm gonna go take a coffee break. I'm gonna go you know, have a smoke or something. They, she walks outside and she's out there 15 minutes. She gets sick, goes home for the day. Uh, how am I gonna edit that node? You know, unless you're an admin, you go in, and <clears throat> go in and break it for her. This gives you a timeout, says, okay, you can set the number of seconds, maybe 30 seconds, 60 seconds, you know, 120 seconds, whatever where if this amount of time passes and that person hasn't, hasn't saved the node, break their lock so somebody else can get in there. Um, there's some other modules out there. Uh, block lock um, does the same kind of thing for, for editing blocks. There's a views block as, or, as well, or views lock, sorry, as well, that'll let you do that same kind of thing with views. Um, but you know, this one especially, very useful. Go ahead. Improved admin. Um, this, if you start using uh, organic groups or you start using a lot of taxonomy, um, you start using a number of, uh, number of contrib modules that start letting nodes have a lot more association with it, 
Instead of going to your admin content node page that just lists your things and says, you know, let me filter by content type um, or filter by you know, the, the built-in filtering that Drupal gives you, this will give you a nice little improved admin all the way across. It'll let you filter by the groups, filter by taxonomy, filter by you know, any different things that might be associated with a node. Um, this is really useful because a lot of times when you get into larger sites, you have uh, requests from your customers or, or your clients or whatever that say, hey, can you make me a page that lets me make all these kind of filtering things? Well, you can. You can use views and expose a bunch of filters and all these kind of things and make this thing happen. But, or you could just go and use improved admin, enable it, boom, all that functionality is already there for you. It's just a, it's a time saver, it's a five minute install as opposed to a 20 minute views writing session. Yeah, question? Is that yeah, it's, it's kind of the same kind of deal. Um, this has a little bit more control on which particular filters you display. Um, I believe it actually even has permissions that says you can use the group, group filter or you can use this fruit filter. Um, that's, a, that's a very good question. There, there's a lot of modules out there um, because like I said, it is a free wielding community that's growing. Um, you know, Steven and I may write a module and then you know, three weeks later, somebody else may write a module that's essentially the same as ours, but theirs does, a, does it a little different way, or they have some different functionality. Um, so you end up with modules that do the same kind of thing that are only tailored to the, the specific set of requirements they have when they wrote it. Um, that's why we always try before we decide that we're going to write a module. Always, always, always before you decide you want to, you know, go out and write your own module. Look and see what's already out there. Don't reinvent the wheel. That's what Drupal's about. That's what this community's about. Don't waste your time doing something somebody's already done. It may not be exactly the way you want it, and if it, does, if it isn't, use it as a starting point. Improve their code. Use their code as a base, as a framework, and change it. Don't, don't go ahead and decide that I'm gonna rewrite, you know, rewrite this, or I'm gonna rewrite that, if there's not a specific need for it. You're, just, you're spending your time that you don't need to be spending. You're wasting either your boss's time or your client's time. Use what's already out there. There's a, you know, the searching on Drupal.org is really nice. Google, you know, Google indexes everything. You can use Google to find what you're looking for. Um, always search before you go ahead and start writing. Um, a lot of developers will want to just, just write, and we're, we're as guilty of that as anybody else. Um, critical users. Um, once again, um, you get, get into cases where people decide that they want, to, they want to go clean up the system. They say, oh, well, I don't need, you know, John Doe doesn't work here anymore. He just left. Well, I'm going to delete his account. Well, John Doe might have left, and you might not want his account anymore. But you know what? John Doe trained his replacement and gave him the same credentials. That wasn't the way to do it, but that's what happened. Now you just deleted your other user out of there. Um, you can, using critical users, you can flag particular users in the system, like user one. Believe it or not, people try to delete the admin user, and people do delete the admin user. Um, you start deleting things that you don't know any better, or somebody decided, oh, well, I don't know who, you know, I don't know who super user is, I'm gonna delete that. Um, this allows you to flag those things and says, you can't. You, you can't delete these unless you go into the, sp the specific admin area for this and uncheck that and then delete it. Um, it's just another little check to make sure that you don't do something crazy. Is that up? All right. And that's the, that's the end of what I have. I know I blew, blew through these last few really quickly. Um, we've got a few more minutes. I'd like to open it up for, for questions. Anybody have anything? All right, looks like not. All right, well, I guess I'll give you about a three minute head start on lunch. So, hope everybody had a good time, enjoy. Thank you. that works the way that you do across all your devices HP Slate and WebOS HP
As a service leader in cloud computing, all we do is hosted computing. To us, the cloud is just the next generation of hosting. And as someone who's been in the hosting industry for 12 years, we feel we're in a unique position to really help bring these two worlds together, these different sets of technologies, and to help companies embrace this new world and this great new tool that allows faster innovation. Not only is it about us being responsive and accountable, but it's about us doing more for you.